Network and Out and About newspaper. This is Out and About Today. Welcome to Out About Today. I'm Brent Meredith. On tonight's show, Pam Wheeler is joined by attorney Abby Rubenfeld to discuss a lawsuit asking Tennessee to recognize same-sex marriages from other states. And later in the Entertainment Outlook, Chuck Long is joined by members of the Actors Bridge Ensemble to give us a preview of their latest production. But first, history was recently made when soon-to-be NFL football player Michael Sam publicly announced he's gay and Jason Collins became the first openly gay basketball player to play in the NBA. Here with me to discuss what this means for society's perception of gay men are my co-hosts Pam and Chuck, welcome guys. Thank you very Thank much. You, I'm hosting some sports information here. So I know. You better, Are you sure you feel comfortable? I do feel comfortable. <laughs> okay, I'm good, good to go. Um, so what were your initial you thoughts? Look at your <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> what were your initial thoughts with Michael Sam and his announcement? I mean, it's amazing. It's wonderful. This is what changes hearts and minds. It's an SEC award-winning player from Missouri. So mm -hmm. a big guy, big player. I know we've talked about the subject before with the MTSU kicker that came out. We yeah. were very pleased with that. Uh, this is big time football player. Yeah, yeah, and uh, literally, I mean, Chuck was saying so earlier. He's during conference defensive player of the yeah. year. I mean, he's a guy that gets in there. He's a defensive end. He's in there and he is like attacking. He is not right. just running from right. people, you know. But you know, I, I also think it's really great because. Um, in, I mean, I always hate the community thing, but in the heterosexual community, guys have overwhelmingly been supportive mm -hmm. of him. Um, I think there was like an Australian golfer who made a couple of bad tweets about it, you know, and said some derogatory things, but people really jumped on that particular golfer when he did that. Right. Yeah, it's wonderful, and, and I'm sure you guys are aware of this. He told his team last August before the season started, mm -hmm. right? You guys are aware of that? Mm -hmm. And it was kept on the down low, and then this was orchestrated this coming out before the NFL Columbine. You guys know what that is about. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, the, the biggest thing would be, a bigger thing, and I don't want to sell this short at all, but <laughs> would be a, an all-star <coughs> NFL player right now coming out. Sure. Some of the big names. But don't you feel like this is a step toward that, potentially? I mean... Uh, oh, for sure. And, you know, you guys probably listen to the sport, local sports radio. And they talk about, you know, they talk about, they're gay players. Yeah. Uh, you know, we know this. They're just not. They're not out. Out, and yeah. so yeah. But this will certainly help people well, come out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the whole thing we've been hoping for. Well, I mean, the NFL is a very demanding and physically, you know, tough sports league to be in, obviously. So if, if Michael Sam plays well, what do you think this will do for the perception of gay men, either maybe not even in sports, but just in general? Break down the stereotypes. I, say, I, I guess I'm, I know, the I mean, I'm part of the problem is what I'm hearing. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, See, break that down, was a loaded question. It, it will you. break down the stereotype. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a great step, and I can't wait to see how he, how he does. The draft's in May, and uh -huh. we'll see where he lands, and we'll be talking about about it again, no matter how uncomfortable <laughs> it makes you guys feel. It's not uncomfortable. I think it's fascinating. I just wish I knew it more, better personally. But I do know when he made his first public appearance after the announcement he, at uh, Missouri University, he received a standing ovation. So, I mean, that's a pretty big deal to have in a standing ovation. Yeah. Um, does this show that it, society, at least within that, uh, that, that venue, is more ready for a gay football player? I think yeah. so. I, I mean, really, standing I mean, ovation, come on. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and even some of the people, which is interesting, that used to say, well, you can never have that in a men's locker room. You can't yeah. have a gay player with us. And I'm thinking, are you serious? Like there's I mean, never been to date. Yeah, exactly. In a gym? Mm -hmm. I mean, hello. But anyway, but most people have not said anything derogatory about that even, which is really nice. Oh, right. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, you know, it happens at the same time we're around the big um, story out of Miami where uh, teammates were bullying, or one teammate was bullying another teammate using uh -huh. some words that um, are controversial. We know some things go on, so this is a step, especially once he's with the team, he's not with the team yet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to change those locker room conversations. Sure, sure. Yeah. Now, um, there was a commentary by a Dallas sportscaster, mm -hmm. um, who I believe you know, Chuck, uh, Dale Hansen, recently that went viral uh, when he shared his thoughts about the NFL not being ready to accept a gay player. What do you think about that? I just, he is so eloquent and he's so respected in that market, that, that's the market that I came from, but um, one of the things that he said, he said, you know, you beat a woman and drag her down a flight of stairs, pulling her hair out by the roots, you're the fourth guy taken in the NFL draft. Yep. You kill people while driving drunk, that guy's welcome. Players caught in hotel rooms with illegal drugs and prostitutes, we know they're welcome. But you love another man, well, now you've gone too far. Right. I mean, 
I just and, and that's just a, a little <laughs> section of it. But I mean, it spoke volumes and it went viral. I mean, yeah. they had five million hits within two days. Yeah. Right. So I mean, it, it and, and people supported him, you mm -hmm. know, which I just loved. And he he was on Ellen. I mean, right. it, it just it went completely viral. Right. And we didn't go back to Jason Collins, the NBA player that came out at the end of the last NBA season and was right, picked right. up by uh, the Nets and is playing. I mean, that what that does besides all of us, you know, Kobe Bryant came out, I think you've got a quote, mm -hmm. and his teammates supporting him, all these things are just making progress outside of the sports world. I mean, that's... Yeah. And what I love about somebody like a Kobe Bryant, I just, I'm quoting everything today, but yeah. he said, um, there is a kid out there who is going to say, Jason gave me strength in dark moments to be brave. He gave me courage to step up and accept myself for who I am despite what others might be saying or the public pressures. He gave me strength and bravery to be myself. Mm -hmm. That reaches far beyond the sports community, the football community, that reaches across the board. I love that. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here reading my notes. Now, but before Michael Sam made his announcement, uh, Jonathan Vilma was asked about the culture of the locker room, and you mentioned that earlier, yeah. and was asked about sharing it. Now, he said, imagine if the guy next to me, you know, I get dressed, naked, taking a shower, the whole nine, and it just so happens he looks at me, how am I supposed to respond? So this is different than just the witty banter. They're worried about the visuals. Right. Again, same answer. I mean, we've been doing this for years, and I'm here to tell you, I mean, most straight men check each other out too, right? I mean, is that right. Not that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, just out of curiosity. I mean, women look at what you're wearing and that sort of thing, whether you're straight, whether yeah. you're gay. I mean, you're it's sizing each other up, yeah. I mean, you know, literally yeah. and figuratively. Yeah, the reality is there's been gay people in the locker room yeah. they've been dealing with, and they probably know, you know, we think about who's gay, who's not. Right. Uh, there are rumors. Their teammates probably already have those. Uh, well, and, and on top of that, I mean, obviously, we've been, I've been in locker room situations, we all have, where you kind of condition yourself to not, that's not a place where you're going to be noticed. Right. You right. work at that typically from elementary school on. Right. So, you know, it's not something that you're really going to get aroused by. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I think they're telling us we're out of time as we're talking about locker room arousal. That's fantastic. <laughs> so I, I hate to cut us off, and we will revisit this topic again, and yes. we'll let you host it next time. Okay? All right, I'd love to. Thank you. <laughs> and don't you go away. When we return, Pam is joined by attorney Abbott Rubenfeld to discuss the lawsuit to have Tennessee recognize same-sex marriages from other states. Stay with us.